اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا محمد و آله الطاهرین In our last session we were discussing verse 93 of Surah An-Nisa وَمَنْ يَقْتُ الْمُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَعَنَهُ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُ عَذَابًا عَظِيمًا Should anyone kill a believer intentionally, his requital shall be hell to remain in it forever. Allah shall be wrathful at him and curse him and he shall prepare for him a great punishment. We discussed the details of the verse. We discussed the difference between غضب, wrath, and curse, la'na, of Allah. But one question remained, and that is, having uh, noticed this very severe uh, address of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding killing a person, a believing person, if someone kills a believing person intentionally, would he or she be able to repent? And if they, they repent, would they, their repentance be accepted by God or not? Now, considering the tone of the verse and the way it explicitly mentions without exception that this is the severe punishment. Some commentators have said that no, this is an exception in repentance. The repentance of a killer is never accepted because Allah says, Jazauhu Jahannam Khalidan Fiha will remain in hell forever. There's curse, there's wrath. So how could he repent? However, this is against what we know regarding repentance in the Quran and in the Hadith. The door of repentance is never closed. It, it is always open for any sin, even the sin of shirk. We, I think we, uh, that uh, we treated uh, in details the meaning of this verse in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha Allah will never forgive shirk as a sin and forgives anything below that and that means the only sin which will not be uh, forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk. And whatever is, uh, whatever beside that can be covered by forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can be included in the forgiveness and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we understand. And this is uh, actually regarding a person who does not repent because we know that Allah accepts repentance even for shirk and many of the companions of the Prophet peace be upon him were mushrik before they converted to Islam they converted to Islam and repented and their repentance was accepted so as we discussed this in the in, in verse number 48, we said that this means even if people do not repent, it is possible that Allah forgives them based on different uh, elements, situations, things that Allah knows better. But by forgiveness, everything should be uh, should be forgiven. This is the meaning of Tawbah. And we have this in Surah Zumar, verses 53 and 54. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ 
لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأنيبوا إلى ربكم Tell my servants who have wronged themselves that they should not uh, lose hope in mercy of Allah because Allah forgives all sins so repent and come back so all sins will be accepted with all every repentance for all sin is acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because otherwise for example suppose someone commits a, a, a very grave sin and then they know that this sin will not be forgiven at all so what will happen in future so why should they refrain from sinning if they know that they are going to hell forever after committing one sin like killing a person and repentance is not acceptable then why should they refrain from doing other evil so that is that is actually the philosophy of repentance that Allah will reset the person's life and put it on the right course by accepting the repentance therefore even the repentance of someone who has killed a believer must be acceptable if the repentance is real sincere however the verse gives this very uh, rebuking tone to tell us that this is not an easy thing don't take this easy and don't think that just by a word of repentance astaghfirullah you will be forgiven the repentance here would be difficult and we have one hadith in this regard actually that uh, uh, the Prophet peace be upon him says لَزَوَالُ الدُّنْيَا أَهْوَنُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ قَتْلِ امْرَئِ مُسْلِمْ The disappearance of the whole world, the destruction of the whole world is easier with Allah than killing a believing person, a Muslim. So it's very grave. Therefore, the repentance should, should have some conditions. It comes. It should come with real, real regret in the heart, and then things that would compensate for that killing. And in the in the next verse, actually, we will see how severe it is if someone intentionally kills another person for gains of this world. And in, in another hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, لو أن رجلا قتل بالمشرق وآخر رضي بالمغرب لأشرك في دم. If a person is killed in the east and another person is happy with that in the west, in the western part of the earth and eastern part of the earth, then they are a partner in killing that person in, in his blood. Even being happy, even to have consent of killing of someone, some, a believer, then of course the person is uh, a partner in, in shedding their blood. And there's a hadith from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq a believer's religion is ever safe as long as they do not shed blood unlawfully. One who kills a believer will not succeed in repenting. So this, this hadith tells us that repentance here is very difficult. Will not succeed. Of course, this is for those uh, careless people, callous people who they don't they don't care about shedding blood. That is not. I mean, if if a person is like that, the repentance cannot come from the heart, so it cannot be accepted. Now, the following verse actually is the result of these verses about killing intentionally 
unintentionally and uh, it, it is in a sense it, the, the two verses before were actually uh, a prelude to introducing this verse which is a very important verse verse number 94 <laughs> إذا ضربتم في سبيل الله فتبينوا ولا تقولوا لمن ألقى إليكم السلام لست مؤمنا Oh you have faith when you issue forth in the way of Allah try to ascertain do not say to someone who offers you peace you are not a believer تبتغون أرض الحياة الدنيا seeking the transitory words of the life of this world. فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ مَغَانَ مُكَثِيرَةً Yet with Allah are plenty of gains. كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا You too were such earlier. What Allah did you a favor. Therefore do as certain. Allah is indeed well aware of what you do. Now, regarding the uh, the nuzul, the cause of revelation of this verse, all the issues which led to the revelation of this verse, circumstances and different instances, there are a number of narrations in both Sunni and Shi'i books. One narration I mention uh, here, which is a bit more clear, a clearer than other narrations, but there's, a, there's an issue with this. I will mention later on. The Hadith says, after the battle of Khaybar, the messenger of God sent an army headed by Osama ibn Zayd. Zayd here, Zayd ibn Thabit, the stepson of the Prophet, Osama ibn Zayd sent him to some Jewish villages around Fadak to convert them to Islam. When a wealthy Jewish man there heard about this, he took his family and properties and came out by the mount declaring the two testimonies of faith. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad al But Osama having heard that, speared him and killed him. When he returned to the messenger of God and told him the story, the prophet said, you killed someone who testified that there is no God but Allah and I'm the messenger of God. He said, but, oh messenger of God, he only wanted to spare his life. It was just a, just a, a, a show. His main intention was to save his life. Otherwise, in his heart, there was no faith. The Prophet said, did you open up his heart to see what is therein? You neither accepted what he said with his tongue, nor did you know what was in his heart. This is one hadith. There's a problem with this hadith. And because Osama ibn Zayd at the Acting during the Battle of Khaybar was only about 15 years old. And it's not possible that Rasulullah sallallahu would put him in charge of a, uh, of, 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 of a group of troops to go to such a mission. Uh, other narrations, similar narrations have been mentioned regarding other people as well. But uh, this may, be, may have happened, this Sariya, or this mission may have happened later on, and this should have been later, like for example the last year of Prophet's life, not about Khaybar, and some other narrations actually say that, that uh, in from Suddi, he says that this verse was revealed 
regarding the mission of Osama ibn Zayd and his troops. And they had gone to a Syria through a mission, war mission. So it is nothing about Khaybar or the year in which it happened. They met a, a, a person who was pasturing his herd, his flocks, and when he saw them, he said, Assalamu alaikum, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Osama killed him and took his flock. Why? Because, of course, the, these were valuable assets. And he thought that this man is pretending. And the same uh, course of events happening, he came back to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said what had happened, and the Prophet said the same thing. He said, did you kill someone who testified la ilaha illallah? And because of that, now this is again an issue here, not an issue in the hadith, an issue in the mindset of Osama ibn Zayd. He swears, he made an oath that he will never kill anyone testifying la ilaha illallah. Okay. And that was an excuse for him, he said, because the Prophet told, actually rebuked me for that. While the Prophet should have punished him rather than just rebuking him for that. Anyhow, we don't know what circumstances were, but he said because of that, he made an excuse that he will never fight anyone saying la ilaha illallah and therefore he withdrew, withdrew helping Ali salam against the troops of Muawiyah saying that they, they say la ilaha illallah, I don't want to kill someone who says la ilaha illallah. Now his argument of before is flawed, killing a Muslim intentionally while he declares that he was a Muslim, is very different from a Muslim who's Baghi, who's transgressor. He had heard the Prophet saying, Ya Ali, Selmuka Selmi, wa harbuka harbi. Anyone who's at peace with you is at peace with me. Anyone who is at war with you is at war with me. That Osama had heard that from the Prophet. And also, Osama had read this verse in the, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hujurat. فَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلَهُ بَيْنَهُمَا If two groups of Muslims fight against each other, you try to make peace. However, if one of them is transgressing and does not accept peace, and just wants to continue the transgression, فَإِنْ بَقَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُ الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيَا إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ You have to fight them, the transgressing lot, until they come back to the command of Allah, which is not transgression, being at peace with other Muslims. So, this if this hadith is correct, and if Osama made such an excuse later on, which he did, actually, he did not take part in the battles of Ali against Muawiyah, then, of course, he made a wrong argument or a wrong excuse. Now, there's another hadith which shows how severe such a thing is, and Prophet wouldn't just easily let Osama go with such a thing, that a person declares that I'm a Muslim, and you kill them saying that, no, you, you are lying. I know what is in your heart. This is Waqadi and Ibn Ishaq, report from Ibn Mas'ud and Abu Hadrat, that this verse was revealed from, about Muhallam ibn Tufama al Well, as I said, there may be different instances, there may, there may have been different instances 
of the event, which this verse sums them up. About Muhallam ibn Juthama al-Layfi, that again, the Prophet had sent him in a dispatch, in a mission, and he met a man from the tribe of Al-Ashja'ah. And between him and that man, there were some issues from before. And the man said, Assalamu alaykum. Now, Hayyahu Batahiyat al Islam may mean he said, Assalamu alaikum. Or he said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. But he, he killed them with an arrow. And when he came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, he realized what he did. He came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, Ask forgiveness for me. Do istighfar for me. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, لا غفر الله لك. May Allah does not forgive you. Do not forgive you. May Allah do not forgive you. لا غفر الله لك. فانصرف باقيا فما مضت عليه سبعة أيام حتى حتى. He, of course, with, his, with tears in his eyes, he left the Prophet and died after seven days. Now this hadith is very interesting. Maybe there is some exaggeration in, at the end, but it's interesting how severe it is to treat a man, to treat a person who testifies La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah as a mushrik or as, as an unbeliever without any reason or for the gains of this world or for some issues that were between them. People tried to bury him but the earth did not accept him. It became hard, the body came out so they just throw him between two, uh, two rocks and put some rocks upon him. And this verse was revealed in that regard. And the people who have reported this say that فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ When the news of such a very strange matter came to the Prophet, that the earth does not accept his body, we cannot bury him, and therefore we just threw him somewhere and put some stones on him. لَمَّا أُخْبِرَ بِهِ أَنَّ الْعَرْضَ فَقَالَ لَمَّا أُخْبِرَ بِهِ When he was told about this, this report, he said the earth would accept even those who are more evil than Muhallam. As we see, you can bury everyone. This was a, a miraculous sort of thing. The, the, the earth would accept those who are even more evil than Muhammad. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَرَادَ أَنْ يُعَذَّمَ مِنْ حُرْمَتَكُمْ Allah wants to show how honorable, how valuable is life of a Muslim. That is what Allah wants to show. Now about this Muhammad ibn Jathama, there are reports in both Sunni and Shia books of Rajal, that he was a companion, he did such a thing, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, told him, قَتَلْتَ مُسْلِمًا لَعَنَكُ Allah, You killed a Muslim, pretending that he was not a Muslim in his heart, may Allah curse you, and then it's, اللَّهُمَ لَا تَخْفِرْ لِمُحَلَّمْ Do not forgive Muhammad. And the same thing, there's another version of the hadith that I mentioned regarding uh, what Prophet said when he was uh, when he was informed that the earth did not accept his body. He says, The earth accepts even more evil 
people than him ولكن أراد ولكن أراد الله أن يريكم آية في قتل المؤمن but Allah wanted to show you a sign regarding killing a believer how grave that is anyhow let's come back to the details of the verse يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا ضربتم في سبيل الله here في سبيل الله of course means going for for jihad when you issue forth uh, in the way of Allah is is actually qualifies this issuing forth and this means this was an military expedition or these events were military expeditions and it shows how even in such uh, uh, such uh, processions such acts which are done with the pure intention of going for the way of fighting in the way of Allah how they can very quickly become polluted by uh, thinking about the transitory wares of this life وَلَا تَقُولُوا إِذَا ذَرَبْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَتَبَيَّنُوا Investigate. If someone says, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And you just, because you think that they are lying, just do not attack them. You have to investigate. And the best way was to bring them to Medina, to the Prophet, to see if they were really truthful or not. Or to investigate regarding that person from the vicinities. Do not say to anyone who throws peace at you or salam. Now salam it may mean either submission here or Hayakum al Islam says Assalamu alaikum showing that as, as a token of being a Muslim, don't say lasta mu'mina. That means don't say that no, you are not a true mu'min. You are not truly a mu'min. You are lying. Never say that. Or never say that you say this because you fear death. And to go into some applications of the verse in our time anyone who says I'm a Muslim by tongue anyone who confesses Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah will be included in the community of Muslims he is not for example is a slaughter is is if he slaughters an animal, it's acceptable. We do not regard the issues regarding Najas and Tahara. We do not regard him in those issues as a non-believer. And uh, we should not scrutinize whether he's truthful or not. Yes, in those days, Tabayyanum meant that you bring them to the Prophet, peace be upon him. But here, if someone just confesses by tongue, that's enough for us. As a social matter, now, people may, may lie, but that's not our concern. And something which in Al-Manar, Muhammad Abdu says, very interestingly, he says that this is also applicable to the scholars of our time. That when someone says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah, you have to accept their Islam and do not do takfir of them. They know because you are a Shia, because you are a Sunni, because you are what, you are what, we do not accept your Islam. Takfir. Excommunication. We should, based on this verse, we never should excommunicate a Muslim who confesses by tongue uh, saying Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah and actually the verse is 
uh, is supported by another verse in Surah Al-Mujurat. The Bedouins say we believe. Tell them you do not have faith yet. Rather say we have embraced Islam. That is enough that we regard you as Muslims, but we regard you as real faithful people. That's a different matter. The faith has not yet entered your heart, but on your tongue we accept it. And that's enough even for marriage. And if someone confesses by tongue, the shahadatain, the marriage uh, with Muslim women, his marriage with Muslim women is acceptable. Now, why do you, would you not accept if someone says "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammadan Rasulullah" in the context of the verse "Tabtahu na'arad al hayat al dunya"? Because you seek the transitory wares of this world. You seek kanima. You seek mataw al hayat al dunya. You seek mataw al hayat al dunya. The main incentive for this rush. And rash reaction was actually gaining his points. And that's why the Prophet said, Allahumma la taqfir al And uh, it shows this is tempting even for those who go to jihad in the way of God. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, this is very interesting hadith, beware of this world because by the one in whose hand is my life it is more bewitching than Harut and Marut the wares of this world the transitory gains of this world bewitches you put a spell on you even when you go to Jahan beware of that because they are more, more bewitching than Harut and Marut now the verse continues as كَذَلَكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ You were like that before. Allah may favor to you, gave a favor to you. And this, inshallah, we will discuss in our next session with the rest of the verse as well. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين